All right, class, let's begin. This is Friday's class. Uh, I'm actually doing a do-over real quick here for it, but uh, Friday's class, we technically just handled two homework questions, uh, 25 and 33 for the period. So I'm gonna rewrite them. I made a, a mistake on them. And so we're gonna redo them. So let's go for it here. This is 6.2, number 25. If you have the same problem, hopefully we'll fix it up right here. So number 25, I got it written on the next slide already. So square root of three sine theta plus cosine theta is equal to root three. And we are in degrees. So this one you do have to kind of pay attention to. Make sure that you know where you're coming from on that. So let's go for it here. So first things first, I'm gonna change my pin color. All right, I am going to move things over. So it looks like this. And then I got myself that, that is equal to right there. All right, and the reason why we're doing this is because we saw two different trig functions right here. This is sine of x and cosine of x, and they are linear in form. So we're stuck. We're stuck like we were in last, last uh, class. There's no way to undo a sine and cosine or factor them out in such a way that uh, we can get, uh, we can look at both of them. So the trick here is to uh, solve for one of the trick functions on one side. You can leave the square root of three there. And then we, what we're gonna do is we're going to square both sides. That's what we wanna do there. Square both sides. And then something we talked about the other time, the other day, when you square numbers, if things are already equal and you square them, they still turn out to be equal, that's great. So a true statement goes back to a previous true statement. But there's also another problem. With signs, when you square a negative, it turns to be positive. So negative five is not equal to five. When you square both of them, they turn out to be a true statement when originally it was a false statement. So what do we do here? We just check whenever we... And... So you just check our answers here as we do it here. So let's go for it here. I'm still change my pin color. Okay. So as I square this, square root of three times square root of three becomes a three. This should be just sine squared theta now. This one, oh boy, here we go. It's going to be one of those times another one of those. So let's jam. So let me do this on the left-hand side. That's all good. Here it's going to be three a minus root three cosine theta, another minus root three cosine theta, and then a plus cosine squared theta. Okay, that's done. Simplifying as much as we can still, and it's gonna be right here. It's gonna be these two put together. So negative root three cosine theta, another one makes negative two root three cosine theta. And okay, now the question is, which trig function are we going to get rid of in order to get this to the same trig function? And so I have a sine squared, I have a cosine linear, and then I have a cosine squared. Notice we have a linear form right here. That's just cosine in a linear form. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change everything into cosines. So that's what I'm going to change right here. So by Pythagorean theorem, sine squared is the same thing as one minus cosine squared theta. Okay, perfect, everything else remains the same. And now notice we have everything in terms of just one single trig function, there it is. Okay, with that, let's multiply in. So that's gonna be three minus three. So now since I see a cosine and a cosine squared, I'm gonna set everything equal to zero and start factoring or quadratic formula. That's what I'm thinking in my head. So let's move things about. Minus three minus three add three cosine squared theta plus three cosine squared theta gets you zero. Oh, actually, no, we're gonna be left with only two terms here. That's cool, the threes are canceled. Okay, so negative two root three cosine theta plus four cosine squared theta. I don't like the way it looked, but I know I moved everything over to the right-hand side. So I'm just gonna flip-flop the equal sign. So four 
cosine squared theta. Let me go back and forth between the slides here. Uh, minus two or three cosine squared theta. All right, so I am looking at factoring then. So not quadratic formula, I'm gonna look at factoring at this point here. I'm gonna factor out a two, because four and two, there's a two in there. I'm gonna factor out a cosine theta out of that. Leave me with two cosine theta minus root three. There it is, that's what I'm left with. That's cool, set each of them equal to zero. Sine theta minus root three equal to zero and solve. So in this case, I'm gonna get divide by two. This one, I'm going to add root three to both sides, divide by cosine theta. I'm looking for root three over two. So now let's go for it here. So I'm thinking when is cosine theta gonna give me zero? And cosine theta represents the X axis and it gives me zero at zero. No, sorry, hold on, it's the x-axis. It gets me zero here, this would be zero, one. And down here would be zero, negative one. Boom, so I got myself theta is equal to 90 degrees, and then theta is equal to 270 degrees. I right, got that one. Okay, so let's go to here. So I'm thinking when is cosine theta gonna be root three over two? So it's positive, so I know it has to be in quadrants one and four. It's root three over two, so it is the furthest away from the y-axis. That's the way I always kind of think about it here. So that means it's furthest away and up only a half. And that is produced by a 30 degree angle. All right, that also happens on the other side because there's a reflection here, down this way here, and that's gonna happen as a root three over two and a negative one half. Okay, that's, so you're 30 degrees away from 360 degrees, so that has to be 330. Okay, so we have 90, 270, 30, and 330. Guess what we have to do? Since we squared both sides, we have to go back and check. So I have to check 90 degrees. 270 degrees, 30 degrees, and 330. Oh boy, let's go for it here. So back to the original problem. Let's go with 90 first. I have myself root three, Oosh. sine of 90 degrees, it's plus, I think it's plus, plus, yep. Cosine of 90 degrees, and the question is, is that going to be equal to, Square root of three, we don't know, but let's try. So at 90 degrees, uh, cosine is zero, sine is one, so that technically becomes one here. That's a zero. Oh yeah, that's nice. Uh, that's one times root three is root three, plus nothing is still root three, therefore 90 degrees checks out. Let's try 270 degrees, so root three. Sine of 270 degrees, cosine of 270 degrees. And the question is, will that equal root three? Well, let's go for it here. So it, again, if you need to use that little, it's down here, it's zero, negative one. So at this point, sine is negative one, cosine is zero. And that is not gonna be equal to, so not equal to. Root three. And notice it's just a sign difference, right? That's the problem there. It's the sign difference because when you square stuff, this negative sign disappeared, and we thought that 270 was an answer. Okay. Next one, 30 degrees plus cosine of 30 degrees. Question is that root three. All right, so 30 degrees from the previous page. Looks like this, I'm gonna kind of draw it here. So that means this is root three over two and a one half. Okay, so let's go with it here. Um, sine at the sine of 30 degrees is one half plus uh, 30, it's cosine of 30 degrees is root three over two. 
we should put an equal a question mark still. And that's going to be root three over two plus another root three over two. And that's looking good for me. Because when you add this up, you get two of these. We still have to put a question mark, was technically we're still checking. All right, the twos cancel. And now here we declare, yes, we are true. That is true. That checks out. Okay, and then one more, 330. So square root of three, sine of 330 degrees plus cosine of 330 degrees. Is that equal to root three? We'll find out in just a second here. I'm drawing out my unit circle, boom, boom, boom. That means we are at positive root three over two, comma, negative one half. Positive root three over two times a negative one half for sine and a positive three over two for cosine, question mark. We're checking this, and I don't think so. Show the rest of the work, but no, that's gonna be a zero here, and that's gonna be not equal to, okay, so the final answer to this here, theta is equal to 90 degrees and 30 degrees. There it is, final answer to problem number 25. Problem 25. Okay, and we have problem number 33 as well. So problem number 33. Now this one, it says it involves us checking our calculator here. So first things first, the problem. Six cosine theta plus seven tangent theta is equal to secant theta. And let's see what we have here zero degrees the theta up to 360 but not 360 not including 360 okay well we have three different trig functions okay but the base ones that we normally work with is sine and cosine that's the ones we want to make sure that we sort of are thinking through so anytime you see a tangent secant cosecant cotangent you probably want to change it in terms of sine and cosine because that would give us the the easiest way to solve at least we're simplifying that so tangent, tangent is going to be sine, I'm gonna put the seven on top, but sine over cosine, ding, ding, ding. Secant is one over cosine, and notice that's cool, I have cosines on the bottom. Okay, so what would I do here? I would get rid of my fractions, that's what I would do. So notice I have, both of them are fractions of um, cosine. So I'm going to declare right over here, I'm going to declare first that cosine theta cannot be equal to zero because I can't multiply both sides of an equation by zero. That's the only thing I can't multiply by. So as soon as I declare that, so if I ever get, if as, as I do this process and I'm looking for this right here, like, hey, when is cosine theta equal to zero? I'm going to just cross that out. That makes no sense for our problem because if cosine was equal to zero, zero goes into there. You technically will be dividing by zero, or you can say tangent is undefined. So this would make this undefined. That would make that undefined. It would not be correct. All right, let me change pin color here. Let's multiply both sides by uh, cosine theta over here and cosine theta over here. Let's see, as I multiply into here, that should give me six cosine squared theta. As I multiply into there, cosines will cancel here. Cosines will cancel, leaving us just with the top of seven sine theta. And these guys just cancel, leaving us with one. Okay. So now I'm looking at this here. I got still, oh, I got two trig functions here, but I got a little trick I can use. Since they're both not linear, one of them is a square function. So I have a linear sine function, a square cosine function. I'm going to change this up into one minus sine squared theta. That way it will allow me to have everything in terms of sine functions. Distribute. All right, and let's see. I'm, I see a sine squared. I also see a sine function. So I'm gonna do this here. I'm gonna start listing in order so I can start factoring. So the highest degree goes first. Second highest degree goes next, and the one without the sign itself goes at the end, and we're still equal to one, not set equal to zero, because whenever we factor, we have to be set equal to zero for this to work. So negative six, sine squared theta, 
plus seven sine theta is five. Ooh, this should be fun. Okay, still not ready for factoring or quadratic formula because of this little guy being negative. So whenever we start factoring or using the quadratic formula, it's so much easier with it if we have a positive for our leading term. So I'm gonna multiply everything through there by a negative, making that guy a positive. So now let me move on to the next slide. All right, bringing things over to this side. Uh, we have ourselves uh, this now. I just kind of copied and pasted real quickly here. All right, we're trying to factor this down. This seems to be pretty big. In fact, if you want to sort of see it in algebra context, you may want to just write it as, let's see, 6x squared minus 7x minus 5. That looks a little complicated to factoring. Um, I don't think we can, even if you break it up, break the six up into a two X times three X, you know, the five has to come down as a five and a one. And I don't think there's any which way to do that. Okay. If you factor it down, go for it. And, oh, actually, no. Yeah, that's right. I could see a factoring there. I'm going to show you the quadratic formula on it as well here. But factoring would do it. Let's see. Um, I am thinking 10. So this would be a 5. This would be a minus 5. This would be a plus 1. I think that would do it. So that means our answers would have been negative 1 half. And this answer would have been a positive 5 thirds. Hey, let's see if we get the same thing. OK, just real quick here. Put, it up, put this off to the side. Let's see if we get the same thing with the quadratic formula. Just want to see. So if we do this here, do it using quadratic formula, we're going to get sine theta is equal to uh, negative b, so opposite of opposites, uh, opposite of negative seven, plus or minus. This would be b squared to minus four times a times c, all over two times a. Okay, let's go with it here. So this is a positive seven this time. And all the stuff in the middle, I like to just do on the side as opposed to doing it one by one and then simplifying and then rewriting everything all over again here. So negative seven squared is a 49. Um, four, thinking negative four and positive five make 20 times six is positive 120. So that makes a 169. That's cool, that's getting closer. And let's see, this is going to give us, oh, that's 13. 13 over 12, boom. And then we have ourselves two dancers that are coming out of this here. So 7 plus 13 is 20. Divide by 2, take half of that, we'll make 10 over 6. Divide that in half and make 5 over 3. Hey, that's right. There's my little answer right there. That's cool. 7 minus 13 makes a negative 6 over 12, and we have ourselves a negative 1 half. Perfect. There's my answer there. Okay, so we could have done it by factoring. We could have done it by quadratic formula. Okay, so we have ourselves two answers that are coming out of the quadratic formula. We're factoring is a 5 over 3, and a sine theta beginning giving you a negative 1 half. Okay, 5 over 3 is rejected because sine theta can't be greater than 1. It's stuck between a one and a negative one. That's where sine theta works. So that is rejected. This one, let's go and do it. This one's going to be at a negative one half. So quadrant three and quadrant four. Else, and then uh, because it's a negative one half, I know this is going to be the smallest uh, lateral side of the triangle because it only goes down a half as opposed to going down to the root three over two. Okay, so this angle right here should give me 210. And then this big angle all the way over here should give me a 330 on our unit circle sheet. So there it is, there's my two answers here. Okay, so now let's do this here. Let's prove it or let's show it. You can't really prove things with factoring. You could show things with factoring. You prove things algebraically. All right, let's show that uh, 210 and 330 are truly the answers to this here. I'm gonna jump to my original problem. So gotta pay attention here because we have to go all the way back to our original. Let's see real quickly here. 
Uh huh. There it is. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Got some other stuff here happening here, but y equals. And our original problem, go back to your textbook here, and we're going to put this in. It's going to be six cosine of theta. It's going to be x in the calculator here, plus uh, seven and tangent. Tangent is in our calculator. We can just plug in tangent itself of x. That's one equation that we're dealing with. And secant. Secant is not on your calculator. So you're going to have to do one divided by cosine of x. That's the other one. Boom. Okay, and the easiest way to do it is really just click on zoom and click on number seven, which is the trig zoom. It gives you a, at least a quick view of things here. Then we can see if we need to go out or go in here. So there's that equation. There's our second equation. So we're gonna see. So I'm gonna go now to window. So this is going from negative 360 all the way to positive 60. I don't need to do that. I'm gonna go from zero to 360. So I need just need this little piece right here. It looks like I also need to zoom out as well because this tangent is coming across this way here. So let's zoom, let's increase our Y values and let's um, make sure our X values are between zero and 360. Oh, that's right. The other thing we gotta think about is, let's go to mode and make sure that we are in degree mode before we start calculating things here. There it is. Y equals, got the graph. Oh, got to graph it again. All right, so notice there is no graph at all whatsoever. Or we have that thing right there. Okay, so my window is not correlating to my mode that I just did. So I'm gonna go back to zoom again and can click trig zoom. And that should correlate a lot better. All right, there's my test. So I have to be in the correct mode before I hit the zoom button or else it's in the previous mode. Okay, so let's go ahead now, click on window. Boom, and we're gonna go from zero to 360. Some people, what they do is they leave just a little bit of room. They'll go like a negative 10, right? Just kind of so they can see what's happening right at the end in case they, it's going to hit at um, right at 360 here. So I'm going to just a little bit of a buffer zone right there. And I'm going to go every 45 would be our, my little scale. This one, I do have it to increase. I want to just sort of see what happens here. Let me just trying this out. I'm going to go from negative 10 to 10. And I want to see how that looks like now. So go for it, copy it, pause the video if you need to. But let's graph this guy here. So it is. There's my first graph. This is seven, six cosine plus seven tangent right here. Okay. And then uh, question comes up. Question comes up. This little line right here. What is this? This is a. Uh, from our first graph, right? That was a vertical asymptote here. So it looks like it's intersecting right here then also intersecting right here. So let's go over, let's calculate it this now. So notice you have a little green calc button right here. So you're gonna go second, calculate. And we wanna calculate the intersection point between the two graphs, because that's what solutions are. Solutions are really the intersection point. Oh, that's cool. It says, which one is my first curve? Since we only have two curves graphed, you can just click okay and okay. And this is enter a guess. So you're gonna use your arrows, just kind of move a little closer to that little connection piece right there. Click enter and voila, we better get 210 out of this. Yes, there it is, 210. X is the point of intersection at 210. So now let's go to the other one. Let's go with again, calc. So second calc intersect number five. Now we're over here, so we have to move a little. You could just say yes, because you're just figuring out which curve you're dealing with. But I usually like to just move closer to my point of intersection here. Oh, there's my little graph. Okay, so first curve, yes, because I only graphed two of them anyways. Uh, this one, the reason why they're asking this one is if you had three or four or five or six graphs at the same time, that's why. Second curve, yes, and guess, just move a little closer and voila, enter. 
And I got it. There it is. 330. 330 matches up with my 330 over here. Everything is correct. Hopefully that was a help for you guys on the homework.